Hi, hello everyone. I'm a tutor of Uplets. This is MongoDB session part 11. Uh, to know more about us, please use this website address which I have given in my presentation. So let's see the agenda of our today's session. So today we are going to discuss about uh, one of the Mongo shared method which is nothing but bulk operation and indexing and then storage. So let's see one by one. So the first method in bulk operation is db.collection.initialized order. So it is nothing but. So what it will return the bulk operation to our collection. So what it will do ordered. So the name of method has ordered. So what it will do, it will order the list of a light write operation that MongoDB executes in bulk. So how it will do so order means it will uh, wait for the previous operation to complete and then it will start the next operation so that is what it will do so how it will execute so while executing a order a list of operation so mongodb uh, groups the operation by operation type uh, whether it is the same type and also it will group together for example, if you want to insert a two insert operation followed by an update operation and then after that in insert operation means what it will do, it will uh, group into three different groups. First it will do the two insert operation and then update operation and then next one insert operation. So it will divide themselves into a group. So first group will do the up, up, update operation and then insert uh first it will do to insert second it update and then last insert so this is how it will works uh then each group has at most thousand operation if a group exceeds a limit means mongodb will divide the group into smaller group of thousand or less so maximum it can has thousand groups if it exit means with in turn of to into that group it will divide it so how it will do it will uh, made a group a uh, thousand or less than that so if the bulk operation contains 2000 insert operation means mongodb will create into two group thousand operation one group and another group has thousand operation so if it has two point uh, two thousand five hundred group means what it will do it will divide into three first thousand second thousand and then last 500 so maximum it should have thousand so this is where how it will work how it will handle error so if error occur during the one process of write operation means so mongodb will return without a processing of the remaining write operation so that is where it because it is an ordered operation so let's see the example so here i have uh, creating one variable and then i am initializing db dot user dot initialized ordered so then i'm uh, doing my first insert operation second third and then fourth uh, i'm finding and then fifth also i'm finding and then i'm editing so i have five operate five operations so at last i'm telling to execute so this execute will give the output like this. So we need to, if we are going to perform this operation with the help of initialized ordered method in bulk operation means you need to execute the command at last with the help of that variable name. So bulk dot execute. So what it will do, it will return the following thing. So uh, we have performed two inserted and then uh, one removed and then one update so if it is match means what it, uh, how many queries have got succeeded only two insert got succeeded so other three has not succeeded because it is not fine and it is not updated so that is not uh, not shown in our result so based on a query so it will matches so main concept is like it will perform in the group and then it will per do a either ordered or unordered if it is order means what it will do uh, it will wait for the previous operation to get complete and then it will execute the next operation so the next method is 
bulk dot find dot array filter so how how it works so it is uh, this is my uh, syntax so it will determine array elements to modify an update operation on the particular array field so this was my syntax so bulk dot find query array filters my filtering and then what are the operation with the help of that array i'm going to do so that is what my uh, syntax or skeleton so in update document what i'm going to i can use any identifier to filter uh, so which then reference just like a reference identifier is nothing but the reference so we cannot have a array filter document for identifier if that identifier is not included in our update document and then that identifier should be a lowercase letter and also it contains alphanumeric characters so you can also uh, you include the same identifier to update document however each distinct identifier in the update document must exactly corresponding to the array filter which means we can also use the if suppose we are going to update one document means we can have the same identifier to the entire document so that is not a problem but we cannot specify multiple array filter for the same identifier so that we need to keep the mind if we have a one identifier mean that identifier we cannot use for the multiple array document so that is what so here is the example i have one identifier uh, what i'm going uh, using for multiple array document so this is a uh, totally invalid we cannot specify that array fil array filters to include two separate filter for document x so it is like possible multiple times i using that identifier so it is probably invalid so the best practice is in the single filter document we can use uh, some uh, operations like uh, here also i have used two uh, multiple filters but i am using some operation like or operation i'm performing this and in my example too i'm performing the and operation for this particular two filters and in my third uh, example i'm performing some like i'm fetching some values from this particular so this we can do but here uh, update statement like we cannot specify the uh, array filters for two separate filter documents for two separate multiple array filters we cannot use the same identifier so that is totally invalid and then we can append to the bulk dot find for either update one or update so this is the two method it supports this array filter supports either update one or update so this is all about array filter so the next is so here we are performing the db dot call dot initialize order so i'm performing the array filter method with the help of update one and then i am executing so this is all about array filter so the next method is hint bulk dot find dot hint so basically hint is to specify the index support to the particular query so it has three uh, replace one update update one so we can use either one of the following method uh, takes a index specification documents or the index name string if your specify index does not exist means then it will throw an error so the bulk dot find dot hint has no effect on remove one so it don't have any effect we cannot remove by creating an index only we can replace or update with the help of that index so this is my example i'm inserting these number of documents into my orders collection so what i'm going to do i'm going to create a, a index for this particular field item quantity and price so in the bulk operation i'm using the unordered bulk operation so what i have mentioned i'm using that field which i have created index and in the hint i am mentioning that and then i am replacing so in my second file what i am doing i am updating one so finally i have given the bulk execute so this is how we can write using the hint method in a bulk operation i am using unordered bulk operation 
so finally i am executing we will get the output so if you want to see the field which you what at all the field you have indexed so this will help suppose you have a very huge documents in your collection and previously someone may handle that particular collection you may don't have any idea that person particular person can create an index for any number of field in collection you want to know whatever field that he had created index so that you can use so the one thing you can use to know what are the fields he have created uh, index in the collection is index stats you can use this using the aggregate method so db dot that particular collection name aggregate index stats sort name one so this is any example uh, if in that collection you need to give any one field as a sort so you can be able to view what are the fields uh, index has been used so the next method is upset so in the bulk operation the next method is upset to set a upset option to true for update or replacement operation so this is our following syntax so bulk dot find query upset uh, update and then bulk dot find query upset update one and then upset you can also use for replace one so this three methods supports this following upset method so uh, when the upset option is set to true means no matching documents is exist for that bulk find condition then update or no replacement perform so if the matching document does not exist mean then update or replacement operation performs the set specified update or insert operation so this is the three following method supported for this particular upset so how it is behave basically it describes the insert behavior of the various write operation uh, which we have used so insert for bulk find replace one so this replace one method accept as a parameter that contains only field and value pairs so that only uh, field and value pairs so i'm using the unordered bulk operation so because comparing to ordered bulk operation unordered bulk operation is uh, like uh, this is easier because if we are using ordered means it will wait for the previous uh, write operation to complete or else if we, if i got any error in my previous write operation means this other remaining operation will be get stopped it will not perform those following write operation but in unordered bulk operation so it won't happen so it will execute whatever it comes first it will execute if any error come means it will never mind it will started executing the next write operation so this is the benefit over using unordered bulk operation so in my find method i'm passing a key and value this key is the field and value is the particular value for that field i'm using upset method to replace one so item a b c 3 status p and points 100 so i'm going to replace so the next is bulk dot execute so uh, if the replacement option with the bulk dot find dot upset perform an insert then the inserted document is a replacement document so if the neither means it will specify the underscore id field that mongodb will add to it so uh, if any newly document is added mean mongodb will by default will add it that underscore field because uh, it is default for each and every document inside the collection so it is a uh, like a primary key which is we already discussed so neither replacement nor the document specifies an underscore id mongodb will add that field to the particular document so next is update operator expression so it contains only update operator expression so uh, where bulk equal to db dot items dot initialize on order bulk operation so what i'm doing here status p item null upset update one so i'm set on insert 
I'm the I'm using the current date operator and then I'm setting the points to zero and I'm giving bulk dot execute this and take query will get now executed. So I give that operate operation performs and insert the update document with the fields and value from the query applies a specific update from that or document. So if neither or not occur, MongoDB will add at the underscore ID. So this following up the operation is now completed. So now the value has been updated into our collection in a document. So the next method is bulk dot get operation. So basically what it will do. So it will return a array of write operations that get executed. So it will return the write operation as a groups as determined by MongoDB for execution. So example, it has a series of write operation to get executes and then it calls the get operation on the bulk builder object. So what it will do? So like I am having one for loop. So inside my operation where i equal to one, i less than equal to 1500. Uh, so I need to insert one to 1500 into my collection. So I'm using this bulk insert and then now I'm executing. So I'm giving bulk dot get operation. What it will do? It will return the array with the operation executed. So the output in the MongoDB will divide the operation into two groups like 1000 uh, thousand is one operation and then one with a 500 so it will get inserted accordingly so this is all with the get operation but it will return an array with the operation executed so if you use the get operation it will return array and then accordingly how many operation gets executed it will divide them into that total groups so this is uh like batches and the operation executed so this is the example for that so this is a zero th batch type one and my operation is x is one and then uh, next is index zero so zero to uh, thousand is one batch so and then is a uh, thousand one to thousand five hundred is my next batch so this is how this operation will execute this is one two hundred thousand one batch and then 1001 to 1500 next but so this is how it will work so it will start from the zero index first batch uh, is thousand operation so index starts from zero batch type one and my operation i will have like x1 to x1000 inside this uh, operation so and my next is uh, original zero index is thousand and my batch type is one and inside that i will have my id uh, 1001 to 1500 so this is how this get operation will perform so uh, returned fields so basically it has original zero index uh, it specify in which operation is ordered to the bulk operator based on the zeroth index so first operation added to the bulk builder will always have the zeroth index by default. So uh, specific write operation type, batch type one, insert. If it is update means uh, batch type will be two. If it is remove means the batch type will be three. So here you can see all my batch type is one because i'm inserting so that's why my batch type is one so if we are uh, updating or removing means according to that my batch type will get changed but by default starting stage my index will always starts with zero so accordingly it will execute so this is how the array of documents that contains the detail operation so this is all about the get operation methods in mongodb so the next is bulk dot to json so how it is it will return a json document that contains the number of operation and batches in the bulk method so like it uh, like adds a series of write operation and then calls a bulk to json and then it will form a bulk builder object so 
here I am inserting two documents and finding and then finally I am calling bulk.toJSON. So what it will do? It returns a JSON document. So my inserting operation is two. This is my key and then two with my values. There is no update happens and uh, one remove has happened. So it is uh, one and my batches is two. So there are two groups. So this is one group and then this is one group. So that's why. So this is my bulk.2json. How it will work. So it will return in the form of key value pass based on the what all the operation perform. That is my key and how many it has been performed based on that operation is my value. So this is how it will execute. So the next method is bulk.toString. So what it will, it will return a string of JSON document that contains the number of operation and the batches in the bulk object. So what I'm, uh, it will add the series of write operation and then call the bulk.toString method on the bulk builder object. So I'm inserting uh, one document it has a series of string and then also I'm all inserting some documents has series of string and then I'm removing one document which is also a string so it will uh, finally I'm calling to string so what it will do it is now returning the how many insert of a string insertion operation has happened how many string updation operation has been happened how many remove string operation has been happened so it will return everything in a key value format so here this is also a string this is also a string so this is one operation while inserting this is a string this is a string so i have two insert operation so i have there is no update operation so that is zero one remove operation for string so this is one and batches is two because this is one group and then this is one group so this is how the string method will works next topic is indexing so previously we have been discussing indexing at a few places in our query while executing so today we are going to in this topic today we are going to discuss uh, brief what are the types uh, we have in indexing where we need to use the index and how the indexing structure looks so in my uh, right side you can able to see one image so this is the collection user collection so what it will do it will scan every document in the collection to select the those documents in our query criteria so this is my collection so based on the query criteria it will do the indexing so indexing exists for a query means what it will do it will limit the number of documents to inspect so here my collection and my query criteria and my sort order so based on the criteria it will sort accordingly and then it will return so this is how this indexing work so it supports the efficient execution of queries how efficient that particular query can work so it is all based on indexing so fundamentally uh, mongodb will define the indexing at the collection level and support index on any field either it's a field or a field of a document so by default it will create the unique index on underscore id during the creation of collection so what it will do it will prevents from inserting two documents with the same value because in my first document uh, i have one underscore id i cannot be able to copy and paste that same document into my collection there it will uh, what uh, it will tell that you are duplicating the value some error will occur so this is like this underscore id only helps us to avoid duplication while inserting so to create an index this is our syntax key and index type specification and corresponding following option 
whatever you can mention so there are three types in index single field compound field and multi keys so this multi keys will comes in creating an index for array so that we will see in the upcoming slides so for single fields what it will do so all the collection will have an index on underscore id field so we may also add some additional index to support a, some important operation in our query so can you uh, you can see this image i am creating an ascending index on the single field which is like score score i am creating an index so which is in ascending order so what it will do it will traverse from the minimum to maximum uh, so this is how i have created the index for single field in my document so this is my query what i am going to do i have created the index for this particular score field so it will describe the kind of index for the field so if it is one means it will sort it in a descending ascending order maximum to sorry minimum to maximum so if i specify minus 1 means it will be in the descending order so what i have done uh i so i have already created an index for this particular score field so now i am uh, you can uh, write a query whatever you want you based on your specific filter it will uh, get you the details in a fraction of second and uh, you can see the query efficiency after creating an index for that particular field in a document so we can also create an index for a embedded document so what it will do with an embedded documents on the top level fields so it differs from the indexing uh, maximum size of the embedded document in the index so instead of issued uh, allows us to use a dot notation that is we already know to access uh, embedded document or anything else we only we can do with the help of the dot notation so this is our our example uh, query id underscore id this is my object and this is my score in location is my embedded document here so inside location i have two embedded fields like state and city so now what i am doing i am creating index for location dot city so uh, it will support queries that select on the particular field such as like i can able to find like this location dot state ca so in my second query i have used city as well as but doesn't matter i have created only index for this particular location dot state so this is one way of accessing or creating index for embedded document so there is another way as well as like you can create a index for this particular field in our document alone which is equal to the state and city will be get uh, index created if you create an index for this particular location field so this is like if uh, i have i am embedding more than uh, 10 fields into this location means uh, totally saving time uh, what i will do if this option is not available means what i will do i will separately i am creating index for each and every field so this is totally time based and then uh, query in query ways also it is like it is not efficient so the best practice is to create an index for an embedded field just and then in what are you embedded inside that if you want to create a index for all the embedded field means the best practice is you just create the index for the parent index field so that is what i have done here then you can query like this next is compound indexes so uh, where single index field holds a reference to the multiple field within the document collection so it can support the query that match on multiple fields so here is my syntax to create a compound index so db dot collection dot create index field one type two field two type two so what how many fields also you can use 
so uh, at a time i have created index for two field like user id i have created one which is like which will be traversed from minimum to maximum and for score i have created minus one just like maximum to minimum so this is my document so here you can see the uh, collection of documents resemble the following documents so i am creating an index for item and then stock i am creating index as a compound index so both are like in ascending order uh, the order of the field listed here is very important while creating an index so uh, to refer a document sorted first by values item of the field within the each value should get sorted by values of the stock field so for that we need to use the stock so the query that matches all the index field like compound index can also support the query that matches on prefix of the index field so if you are creating a index for more than three field mean how it will work how with that mongo shell has been taken that is more important if you are creating an index for more than three field at a time means the prefixing concept will this mongo db will use so that is we will say see in later so now what i have done here is i have created a uh, index for item as stock as a compound index which is in ascending order so this index supports a query on the item as well as stock field so that does not matter so here comes a sort because if we are using a uh, index in ascending order for uh, any of the numbering uh, quantity stock so based on the quantity the stock will be available or not like depending interrelated to two so two interrelated fields if you are creating index in ascending order means that value will get affect so it will not actually sorted in ascending order the number will not get actually sorted in the uh, order which we have mentioned so in that case you need to use the sort order so uh, like compound indexes the sort can matter in determine whether the index can support a sort of operation so i am what i am do here in in find method i have used a sort operation like username 1 and date minus 1 so what i have mentioned here the username should be in ascending order and date should be in descending order so accordingly it will perform and in my next query Uh, username is uh, descending and so date is ascending so and then i have mentioned username is ascending date is descending so in index so this uh, index cannot support a sorting by ascending username and then descending date so for that what we need to do username 1 and date 1 so because based on the username the date should perform so any dependent for interrelated field means we should use a sort for ascending as well as descending that we cannot use the create index so already i have uh, mentioned like if you are creating a three field at a time for index means how it will perform so this mongodb what it will do it will subset the each field so suppose i have item location and stock i have created index for these three field means what this mongodb will do it will uh, try creating index uh, for item first and then it will take item and location and then at last it will take item location and stock so it will uh, subset it will uh, itself subset the each field using this prefix concept so if you have a collection that contains a compound as well as b means so what how it will prefix for example a colon 1 b colon 1 means first it will do a colon that neither has a sparse or unique constraint then it will remove the index on the prefix and then it will perform the next so it will use the compound index in all the situation that it would have used the prefix index in the compound index 
so this is all about compound index so the next topic is multi key index so this is our third type in indexing concept so like uh, it will create the index for the field which contains a array value so it creates index for each element in the array so those multiple uh, multi key index will support an efficient query against the array field so like uh, i have created an index this is my syntax either one or zero then it should be in curly braces uh, we, uh, the where we need to use the multi key only for the field that holds the array value what it will do it has some limitations like each index document can have at most one index field whose array is an uh, value is an array then only you can use this compound multi key index so you cannot create a compound multi key index for the document that field is not an array for example uh, here i have id 1 and a 1 comma 2 this is an array and b 1 comma 2 this is also an array and a b both arrays so i cannot create a compound multiple index for a colon 1 and b colon 1 since uh, the collection both a and b field or arrays or if the compound multiple key is already exists i cannot insert that if i insert means i am um, the violation will occurs so this is my uh, collection for the particular document so i have a array and b array separate field i have an array so here b is not an array but here b is an array a is an array in the first document and second document a is not an array b is an array and here category a is array and then b is array so now what it will do so it will uh, one by one index the compound multiple key is an index then no document contains an array for both a and b fields so after creating a multiple key index uh, if you attempt to insert a document where a and b fields are array it will fail to insert so you need to insert before creating a compound multiple key document itself so if a field is an array of document you can insert the embedded field to create a compound index that is possible because for embedded document also we can create an index so same way for multi key index you can create an index for embedded fields to create a compound index so consider this collection for the following documents so what is have mentioned i have created a compound index on a dot x1 and then a dot z1 because here a i have an array element and also for this z uh, in the z as well as i have an array element so the restriction is like most one index field can be array also applies any one thing inside that field should be an array which means you can create a compound index for that particular field so that is possible only thing uh, if there is no field inside that no values inside that field is array means compound index is not possible so query on array field as a whole so what it will do it will exact match for an array as a whole and then use the multiple key index to look up the first element of the array but can also uses the multiple key index to scan the whole array so what it will do it will look up the first element and then retrieve the associated document and then filter who matches the array in the query so this is how this multi key index in the array will work so this is my for the rating field rating is my array i am creating an index for that field and then i am querying like 5 comma 9 so what it will do it will take that first field and then based on the field it will matches uh, the condition and then it will return so this is how it will works so it retrieves those document and filters the document is equal to 5 comma 9 
So EXPR operator is not supported for multiple key indexes. So for example, uh, basic array, I have two comma five comma nine. Now I have created an index. So what it will do? Index. Uh, I'm going to use a multi key, uh, three index key, each pointing to the same document. Two, five, and nine, all pointing to the same document. So now with the embedded documents, how to use this multi key? Same thing. So here I have a like stock size and color quantity so that is my embedded array document so i have created a stock dot size and stock dot quantity index stock uh, but color i have not created an index so like uh, but i have uh, and also i have queried that uh, particular field so the compound index support the sort operations and the following example so previous example uh, already we have seen this indexing will support a sort operation so likewise the same in multi key or compound index it will also separate the uh, it will also support the sort operation so db dot inventory dot find and sorting that uh, fields which i have created an index that too is embedded field so this is also possible and this is also possible so you can use whatever you want so in indexing we have discussed about so what is indexing so how is query executed based on indexing how are the types single index compound index and multi key index uh, single index is uh, creating an index for only one field and this compound index is all about creating an index for more than one field and this multi key index is to create an index that contains the array values. So, this is all about indexing. So, mainly in MongoDB for query efficiency, we are go using this indexing. So, the next topic of today is storage. So, basically, storage engine is the primary component of MongoDB. How it is responding a or how it is managing our data which we have storing in MongoDB. So this is every uh, developer who are using MongoDB should know this topic. Like how it is managing our data, how it is storing. So that is main important. So it is provides a variety of story, uh, storage engine that uh, whatever application suit it will automatically take that storage engine. So based on the application, it will choose the storage engine. So if, if it is any uh, shutdown or if any, uh, like if the server got down means what it will do, it will automatically recover our data. So no need to, uh, so if there is no need to take a backup, it will automatically recover our data. So uh, like, uh, Grid is one of the main concept in uh, storage. What it will do, it is suitable to handle a large file such, such as uh, many maximum size is 16 MB. If it is exceed that 16 MB means, so grid is comes a concept. So it will store uh, what all the documents it contains uh, more than 16 MB. So storage engine is a component of database responsible for storing a data in either memory or in a disk so uh, multiple storage engines are different better for sp specific workloads so it is like a base uh, choosing a storage engine uh, will it really impact our application so based on our application we should choose the storage engine because that is the main thing so that storage engine will decide either we want to store this data, particular data in memory or a disk. If it is really important data, it will store in a memory or else it will store in a disk as a temporary. So choosing a storage engine based on the application is really important. So after uh, release of production version 4.2, this uh, MongoDB will remove the MMP storage engine and then it uh, brings the white tiger. 
so we has two storage engines so nowadays uh, latest uh, all in all the applications who are not using mongodb they are using only wire tiger so before 4.2 version all the people will use mmp so it is like memory storage engine so it is like wild storage engine is a default engine so it is suitable for all the workloads and it is recommended for new deployments so it will provide the document level concurrency checkpointing compression and all the features it has it is also support the encryption and decryption of storing engines so it will all supported the wire tiger so mmpv storage engine is available what it will do rather than storing a document in the disk it will retain the memory for predictable data latency so next comes in gridfs so what it will do instead of storing a file in a single document it will divide the file into chunks and store the separate chunk as a each document so default size for that particular chunk is 255 kb and then if it is exceeds it will divide that uh, chunks so last chunk is only as large as necessary so if there is no longer chunks has only final chunk means it will uh, add additionally a concept called metadata so if the last chunk size also exit 255 means there comes a metadata so it has mainly two collection to store a file once a one is it will store as a file, chunk files another one is metadata when it will use this metadata only our file size exceeds 255 last file chunk exceeds 255 means it will use the metadata to store so like when to use this uh, grid uh, grid fs Uh, in MongoDB, GridFS is storing large and sixteen MB. That is we have already seen. So in some situations, storing large files may be efficient in MongoDB on system level file system itself. So that uh, file system limits a number of files uh, directory. So that you can use a GridFS to store as many files you want. so even you wanted to access a particular portions like large files uh, without having to load into a memory then you can use a grid fs to recall the section of the files without reading the entire memory so this is also possible here if you want to access that portion that we already uh, save in a file means we can use this grid fs to uh, read without recall without uh, reading the entire memory so this is possible then so, if you want to keep your files and metadata automatically synchronized and deployed the number of systems and facilitates so that you can use grid fs for storing so grid fs if you want to update the content uh, or this entire file automatically do not use grid fs so alternatively you can store the multiple version of the each file and specify the current version of the file in metadata so that it can do but if you want to do automatically this grid fs will not do so instead of that we can do like this we can store the multiple version in a separate file and specify the current version in metadata and then also we can update this metadata file includes a latest status in atomic after uploading the new version and then later removes the previous version if needed so if your files are smaller than 16 mb base and document size limit mean you can consider store each file in a single document instead of using grid fs this is only applicable if our file size is less than 16 mb then you we can also use the bin data type to store our binary data so grid fs has two collection like binary chunks and metadata so how it is storing in a bucket fs dot files and fs dot chunks 
the chunks collection will represent how it is representing it is like a id files underscore id n which is number data is binary so this is how this chunk will store the file inside the grid fs so chunks underscore id which is a unique object id and then file underscore id it is like id of the parent document that is specified in the collection and n is the number of uh, sequence of number uh, that grif fx for all the chunks will basically starts with zero and for data is a payload it should be like a binary type so next is file collection how it will store as a fs dot file so this is uh, a representation like it contains id length chunk size and what is our upload data md5 file name content type alias and metadata so let's see what are all the one by one so what is id basically it is a data type you have choose for original document and this is the unique and for default type for mongodb for uh, base n is object id so what is length so it has the size of documents in bytes and next is chunk size so it is the size of the each chunks in bytes so what it will do it will divide into chunk size except the large so the default is 255 so if the large exists 255 means it will use the metadata so the next is upload date so the date of the document just stored by grid fs next is file name so it is a human readable name only it will give so next is content type so what it will do it use the metadata for storing information related to mime type of grid as file so allies what is like it is a array of ally string so this is also this metadata will store the information related to the mime type of grid file so this is a summary of our today session today we have discussed about bulk method what are the methods we have inside that and indexing type of indexing and then storage how this mongodb will store our data in a system either memory or a disk and what is the special concept in storage is grid fs so this is all about today session see you all in my next session if you have any queries please write to info@tubeplets.com thank you